Creating LEGO animations in Blender might be easier than you think. We're gonna go ahead and go through some free resources and we're also going to texture and rig this little minifig character. Let's dive in. So for a base model, I'm actually going to be using this LEGO minifig work in progress from Tiny Bros here on Sketchfab. It is free with CC attribution, so I'll put those credits in the description below. But after you've gone ahead and downloaded that, you can import the OBJ into Blender and let's look at how we can start texturing this. So first things first, when you import Import this it's going to be into multiple pieces and we're just going to go ahead grab all of these pieces and grab the body there I'm going to hit Control J and that's going to join them all into one and then we're going to name this Lego minifig now first up is we're going to do some texturing and also some UV unwrapping so the geometry here is pretty clean so we should be able to get away with a simple smart UV unwrap so if you go ahead and press U smart UV project that will go ahead and put all of these islands here and make it pretty easy for us to texture. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and just put a material on here. Now you can do whatever type of plasticine material you want, but I have these plastic materials as part of my free sample pack, which is a pretty easy one to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag these onto the character here and take a look at those in render view. And you can see here that we're starting to get that kind of just used plastic feel on our character. So now we're gonna go ahead and begin texture painting this to kind of design our character. So what I'm gonna do next is come over here to the shader editor. And then what we're going to do is grab a image texture here, going to move this over, and we're going to plug the UV here into the vector. We'll plug this into the color. This will turn pink, letting us know that it has no image texture. We're gonna go ahead here, click new, ensure, that your color has full alpha. And then we are going to go ahead here and name this Lego base color, just like that. I'm gonna set mine to 4K resolution. If your machine can handle that, I recommend that. And then what we're gonna do for our base color is go ahead and just pick that kind of classic Lego yellow. So something around like there. So with our object selected here, I'm gonna to switch to material preview mode, and then I'm going to switch over to texture paint. Now. We have the paint bucket tool here, which will allow us just to fill large sections of our character, and we can isolate that by selection. So if we tab into edit mode here, everything is currently selected. We're gonna deselect everything. And let's go ahead, for example, and just select our pants here. And if you don't know how to do that, all I'm doing is pressing L over each individual object and it will select every individual mesh. Now let's tab back to texture paint mode, click this button up here, and what that will do will isolate our selection based off of the selection we have in edit mode. So now we can go ahead and use that paint bucket to click. And then if we go ahead and turn this off, you can see that now we have some blue pants for our character. Great, let's go ahead here and let's add a bit of color to the top here as well. And then we're going to draw kind of a shirt on this character. Great, now let's go ahead and do the body. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode, make sure that only the arms and the upper body are selected there. We're gonna tab back here into texture paint mode and pick a color. I'm gonna go ahead and just do kind of pure white there. Perfect. Now I'm gonna tab back here into edit mode, get rid of everything there. And you can see that we're starting to kind of have a look of our character. Now we're gonna go ahead and start drawing some decals and a face on our character. But we also want to add a bit of bump extrusion on those. So let me go ahead and show you how we can do that. So to create that sticker, we're gonna come back over here to our shader editor. We're gonna kind of cluster everything up over here and we're gonna go ahead and add a new image texture. We're gonna click new and let's call this sticker. And I'm going to click this color here and turn the alpha down and then make sure our alpha is set here. I'm also just gonna set this to black for visual. And now you can see that we've created basically an empty PNG texture. And that is called sticker, and we're going to grab that UV and plug that into there. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and add another shader. So we're gonna grab a principled BSDF node, and let's just go ahead and plug this directly into our character here for a second, so I can give you an example. Now we're going to plug the sticker into the color here, and then we are going to plug the alpha into the alpha down here, and then what we are going to do is we are going to use the bump node to plug into the normal down here. So we'll go ahead, do bump right there. We'll take that alpha, we'll plug that into the height there, leave the strength at one, go ahead and plug that into the normal. Great. 
So you can see here that we have nothing on our character. We're gonna go ahead here and we are going to mix this with our plastic worn shader up here. So what I'm going to do is move this material down here. We're going to drag this off into a mix shader. We're gonna go ahead, plug that there. And we are going to add this BSDF node here. And then we're going to set that alpha to a factor there. And you wanna make sure that this is on the bottom and this is on the top. So now when we paint on the sticker, what it is going to do is show the shader wherever we paint as it fills the alpha. And that alpha here will then drive into the bump with a strength of one into our normal. And what that's gonna do is gonna give us a small ridge, which let me go ahead and draw in here to show you an example. Over here, make sure you have the sticker set. And if I go ahead and paint here, you can see that it is revealing that sticker, but also kind of creating a bump. Because if you've ever played with a minifig, you know those stickers are printed on. So that kind of gives us the idea that this little ink sticker has been printed on. Great, now we can go ahead and begin painting details. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of fast forward through this process. You can paint whatever you like on your minifig. If you're not comfortable painting faces, I have a free little facial pack you can use for animation. It wasn't designed for Legos, but the faces are simple and will give you something to work with. So next up, let's focus on making a rig for our character. By now you should have a texture you're pretty happy with. Make sure you save it and save those texture files so they're not lost. And what we're gonna do here is snap in the front view here. And we're also going to open another 3D view. And in this view, we wanna go ahead and make sure that we are also in side view so we can see what we are doing. Great. So let's go ahead here and add an armature. So we're gonna add an armature here. And this is going to be very large because our minifig is small. And we're gonna go ahead, grab that armature, and we're going to look for Lego mini, we'll just call that arm for short. Now, at this point, before we begin rigging, you want to determine the scale of your character. So by default, when you import this, this character is going to be 0.259 meters. Um, so pretty large. Now, if you want to scale accurately, when you go to do your animations, that will give you a more realistic lighting setup and depth of field setup based off of Blender settings. So what you would wanna do is go ahead, scale this down to maybe an actual minifig size, something very, very tiny, and then apply your scale. Now, for the sake of not adjusting my camera settings or anything to be able to see those tiny scales, I'm just gonna go ahead and work with kind of the default sets here. But just make sure your scale is set to one before you begin rigging. So let's grab this bone here. We're gonna tab into edit mode here and we're going to bring this bone all the way down there. And this is going to be our root bone. So let's go ahead, grab that bone, hit F2, name that root. Perfect. Now we're gonna go ahead and add some more bones. So we're gonna go ahead here, hit Shift A to add another bone. And we're going to scale this bone down and rotate that 180 degrees. So what you can do is just grab that top one and move it down on the Z axis and that'll kind of flip it. Great. Now you might be having a hard time seeing your bone. So you can come over here to the armature tab and what you can do is go to viewport display and hit in front and that will just put it in front of everything. Now, what we wanna do on all these bones is make sure that they match on the side view and the front view. So I'm just gonna go ahead, center this up on both views. I want this to be down on the pivot point of that leg. Then we're gonna bring this up to the bottom of the leg. Great. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to name this leg.l. And that's because this is technically the left side of the body and we're gonna use this to symmetrize later. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna grab this bone here and we're gonna hit Shift D to duplicate it. We're gonna move it up here to the arm. And what we wanna do is get this on a pivot point of the arm right there. Now, this arm right here, normally you might think that you wanna bring it out here, but since we're going for a realistic kind of Lego animation where the limbs and stuff don't bend, they just kind of rotate, we're actually going to leave it in this position. That'll make sense a bit more why later. But we're going to go ahead and name this arm dot L. And then now what we wanna do is create a bone for the body and the head. So we're gonna hit Shift A, we want this one to be upright. We're gonna go ahead, put that pivot point down there, grab this top here, bring this all the way down here, 
Just make sure you get something you're kind of happy with right there. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab this here. We're going to press E at the tip there and just bring that up on the Z axis. So let's go ahead here, call this body, and we're gonna go ahead and call this head. Great. Now we're going to go ahead and add a bone for the hand. So we'll hit Shift A, add a bone there. I'm gonna go ahead, bring this up there, and then bring this down on the Z axis. We're gonna get that around on the hand. So this one here, is going to be a bit different than the other bones because this one's not going to be straight. So we're going to go ahead, bring this one out here, grab this tip there, bring that out, just trying to get that in line with the wrist as much as we can. Let's go ahead here in the front view, grab this on the x-axis and make sure that that is kind of right there at the center of the hand, which is exactly what we want. So go ahead, feel free to keep playing with that until you're happy. But I think that's a good position. So we're going to go ahead we're going to grab this one and call this one hand.l. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and make some adjustments. So when we are doing these Lego minifig animations, we are going to be using simple types of rotation and things like that. So first of all, let's go ahead here, tab into pose mode. By default, it'll set to W, X, Y, Z, Quintorian, and we're gonna just change all these to X, Y, Z, because we don't really need that W when we're doing just simple rotations like we are in these characters. Great. Now we have all those. So let's tab back here in meta mode and let's work on our parenting structure. So what we're going to do is we are going to parent the hand here to the arm and we're going to keep offset. So now you can see here that it is moving just like we want. Perfect. Back in edit mode here. We're going to grab the body here and we're going to go ahead and parent this to the body. Sorry, we're going to parent the leg to the body with keep offset. Now the head is already parented to the body, so we're gonna go ahead and leave that. We're gonna grab the body here and we're going to parent that to the root bone. Great. So now if we switch over into pose mode, we can see how things are kind of working. Perfect. So next what we're going to do is begin locking some access so that we don't accidentally animate things we don't want. So what you wanna do is come up here, switch from global transform orientations to local. And then this next part's important, you need to be in pose mode. And now we can see the access of every bone in its local orientation, which is exactly what we need. So we're gonna begin locking all of these bones. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab the arm bone here. What you're gonna do is just click and drag down here. And then we're going to unlock the bone for its rotation that we want. So in this case, it was the Z. So now you can see that this bone can only rotate that way, just like an actual minifig. So let's go ahead here, click this bone here. We see that we wanna rotate on the Y axis only, so go ahead, click and drag there. Be careful not to hit these or you'll start inserting keyframes. Open the Y, and you can see now we'll only be able to rotate the hand that way. Great. So the body here actually can only rotate on the X, but the body can also, uh, we'll wanna be able to kind of do some location just so that we can animate that character additionally for jumps and things like that. So leave location for the body on, and then we'll go ahead and we will lock everything except for the X, perfect. Now the head only rotates on the Y, so we will go ahead and rotate everything and leave the Y open. Now the legs here are going to rotate on the Z, so go ahead, lock everything and open the Z. So now what we have is a rig that no matter what view we grab it in, when we hit rotate, it will only rotate on the correct axis, making this extraordinarily simple to animate. So now that we have all of that done, let's go ahead back here in edit mode, search for symmetrize. We're gonna go ahead and hit symmetrize. And that's going to put our rig on both sides and we'll go ahead and check it. And you'll see that now everything's locked and parented correctly. We're also going to go ahead and make sure that both of our arms are parented to the body of our character with keep offset. Great. So we have two steps left in this rig. One, we're going to go ahead and attach our character to this. And then after that, we need to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to do some custom controls to make this a bit easier to use. Great. So let's go ahead. We'll grab our character here on object mode, then grab the bone. We're going to hit control P. Now, what we're going to do is with empty groups. Now, when we come over here to our data tab, you'll see that we have all those bone groups there, but they're not attached. So then what we can do is tab into edit mode here with nothing selected. 
I'm gonna switch over to solid view here. Now in face mode, I'm gonna go ahead and press L over the object, and then I'm going to assign to that object with a full weight, and I'm going to go through and do that with each object. Great, now if we switch over here back to object mode, grab this, go into pose mode here, I should be able to go ahead and begin rotating all of these pieces individually. And you can see that now we have a working rig. Great, so what we're gonna do is hit Shift A here, had a mesh circle to our scene. We're gonna call this circle control. And we can go ahead and just put that in its own collection, call that control. And we're just gonna hide that collection so that we don't have to see it. Now what we can do is grab our bones and then you can come down here to the bone tab in pose mode, come down here to viewport display. And for the custom shape, you can choose a custom object and hit control. And you'll see now that that control becomes a circle. Go ahead, grab that circle. And then you can begin making adjustments here. So I'm gonna set this to be about 0.35, the size of that. And now I have an easy to use arm control to rotate my character. Now just feel free to go through and do that for all the bones. So now you should have some easy to use controls on your character. And one thing you can do as well is when you're adding animation to it, you can go ahead and use this free add-on I've released called StopMo. And you can go ahead and set step amounts and things like that. And what that will do is go ahead and add a bit of kind of stop motion style jitter to your animations, giving it more of that Lego animation look. In regards to the facial animation, I've already done a tutorial on how to do that, which also includes kind of my free rig setup.